In today's video, we'll check out the Atari VCS that was released in 2021. This console is decently powerful, allowing you to play not just classic arcade and console games, but also some more modern games. If you purchased one recently, you may run into difficulties getting it up and running. In this video, I'll show you how to fix that problem, and then we'll explore more things you can do with it. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. The Atari VCS was announced around the time I first started this YouTube channel, all the way back in 2017. It wasn't until 2021 when units began hitting backers of the crowdfunding campaign. I didn't purchase the VCS at that time, and the price was around $400 and includes all the items that you're going to see in this video. However, I picked this up when it was on sale and got it for a more reasonable price. Let's go ahead and get it out of the box. Well, I've pretty much destroyed the outside box, but we'll go ahead and roll with it. The larger box contains the VCS console. VCS stands for Video Computer System, in case you were wondering, and pays homage to the classic Atari VCS launched in 1977, which was later called the 2600. Here's a look at the power supply, which is 19 volts. 3.42 amps and 65 watts. There's an HDMI cable, a power cord, and of course the console itself. There is an offer for AntStream for $39.99 a year for streaming classic games and a card for support assistance, which I almost needed but managed to figure it out and I'll share the solution with you. On the front of the console there are two USB 3.0 ports this is where you'll likely plug in the controllers. They both support Bluetooth wireless as well, but of course they will need to be charged via USB. On the back are two additional USB 3.0 ports, HDMI output to your TV, Ethernet, your AC power input, and a power button. This is the classic style controller but it is wireless and has more buttons than the original CX-40 joystick. There are four buttons on the top, a single shoulder button. Also in the box is a micro USB cable for charging and plugs into the top of the controller. It doesn't use USB-C, which would have been nice. Included in the last box is another type of controller, which is closer in design to an Xbox controller. It has a D-pad, two sticks, three top buttons, and an ABXY layout. There's also two shoulder buttons and two trigger buttons. Like the classic style joystick, this is also wireless and charged using the micro USB cable. I'll connect the HDMI cable, the joystick, the power, and then press the power button. Once the console begins to start up, the controller will be automatically recognized over USB. I'll now transition to video capture so you can get a better look at the interface. You'll then be presented with a layout for the controls, demonstrating what each of the buttons do. One thing that I didn't realize earlier is that you can rotate the joystick and use it for paddle games. That's a pretty cool feature. Anyway, we'll go ahead and select our language our Wi-Fi network name, or SSID, and enter the password. At this point, I realize the controller is rather sensitive and it took some getting used to. We'll see how it performs with games in a few minutes. After connecting to Wi-Fi, it identifies that an update is available, but unfortunately fails to install the update. I tried to create a new account, but it just stated something went wrong. I then tried the guest account and it logged in but continued to say something went wrong and to try again later. I then went to the system tab, then general settings, followed by system updates to check for an update and again something went wrong. <laughs> Clearly this isn't going to work and I need to find a solution, so let's do that next. In this segment we'll manually update the firmware. 
I then went to the Atari support site and found a link to download the Atari OS image manually. However, after clicking the link, it didn't work. The solution for downloading the image was very simple. Remove the percent %20 from the end of the URL, just backspace over it, press enter, and the image will download. Atari, if you're listening, please fix your link. I'll provide a working link in the video description below should you need it. Next, we'll need an application to write the image to a USB stick. There are several that you can use. One that I recommended in the past was Belina Etcher. However, I have had reports from several individuals that have had problems with it. For that reason, I recommend using Pi Imager instead. You can download Pi Imager from raspberrypi.com forward slash software, and it's available for Windows, Mac OS, Ubuntu x86, and of course, a Raspberry Pi. Click the link for your operating system, launch the executable, and follow the installation prompts. For this next step, you will need a USB stick. 8 gigabytes or higher should work fine. Plug it into your computer and launch Raspberry Pi Imager. Click the Choose Device button and select No Filtering. For Choose OS, scroll to the bottom and select Use Custom. Then browse to the location where you downloaded the Atari OS.img file, click it, and click Open. Next, click the Choose Storage button and select your USB stick. I recommend not having any other USB storage devices connected during this step to avoid accidentally overwriting the wrong drive. Now, click the Next button. When prompted to apply OS customization settings, select No. If you're sure you have the correct USB drive selected, click Yes. Pi Imager will then write and verify the image to the USB stick. It will take about a minute or so. Once done, click Continue and close out of the Raspberry Pi Imager and safely eject and remove the USB stick. Moving back to the Atari VCS, insert the USB stick into a USB port, then press the power button. The VCS will automatically recognize the image file and flash the Atari OS to the device. Once the flashing is successful, remove the USB stick and power off the unit and then power it back on. Congratulations, your Atari VCS should now function normally after this. Let's get back to checking it out. Now we'll check out the Atari VCS UI and games. Again, we'll select our language, then select our Wi-Fi name and enter the password. This time it found a BIOS update that is needed and we'll restart the system to apply it. This process will take a few minutes to apply and once it's done, it'll reboot again. Now we can create our account. Read the license agreement then select I accept. Select your avatar. I'll go with the Centipede logo and select next. Enter your display name. I'll just use Wagner's Tech Talk and click next. Enter your email address and select next. Enter a six digit pin and once more to verify. Enter your birthday and select next. Enter your public bio if you want, then select Next, and Next to continue. Check your email account to verify the account creation, and now we're all set up. You can select a category at the top, such as Games. Let's go ahead and launch the Atari VCS Vault. The Atari VCS comes preloaded with access to 100 plus classic Atari games through the Atari VCS Vault collection. This collection includes a mix of Atari 2600 and Atari arcade games, such as Asteroids, Centipede, Missile Command, and Pong. There are many games that you might come to expect as being included, but aren't. That's why we just quickly scroll through all the included arcade games. After you make a selection, you can check out the control settings for Player 1 or Player 2, make adjustments to any of the dip switch settings, which will of course vary depending on the game, 
Modify the display options if you want the bezel artwork on, scan lines, and more. Under audio, you can adjust the game volume, menu effects volume, or the music volume. But let's go back and play the classic arcade game, Tempest, using the joystick as the spinner. Using the spinner on the joystick actually worked out pretty good. I was pretty impressed. From here, you can press the bottom left button and select Main Menu to go back. There are a fair number of additional classic arcade games to explore, as we browsed earlier. Some were originally designed for a trackball, but will work with a joystick. Atari, please add mouse or trackball support for these games. Pressing the button at the lower left of the joystick controller will allow you to toggle between classic arcade, Atari 2600 games, or list view. There is a decent collection of Atari 2600 games available. If you leave the selection on a game for a few seconds, it'll begin to spin, and in some, but not all cases, you'll see box art for the front and the back of the box. For a link to a full list of games that are included, please see below. If you select a game, you can change options such as under display, you can show the bezel artwork, view scan lines, and more. You can view the original manual, which is a nice touch, and many Atari owners will remember this classic, Combat, which was the cartridge that came with my original console many years ago. If you have nostalgia for these classic 2600 games, there are several to explore, but some you might come to expect aren't part of the VCS vault. When it comes to their store, as of December 2024, there were about 180 games that you can download. Most all of them cost something, some more than others. I wanted to review this machine as is without buying anything additional. Uh, that may change in the future. I did install Missile Command Recharge, which appears to be free, and it's fine I guess. The graphics look pretty good, and the gameplay is okay, but this game is really meant for a trackball, so it wasn't as much fun. I tried a demo of Super 3D May 16, and it was interesting, but not likely something I'll purchase. There is a Vault 2, and it does have 100 additional classic Atari games, and I may actually pick this one up later. When it comes to their App Store, well, there are some. <laughs> All of the ones I installed seem to require a keyboard and a mouse to be useful. It seems as if Atari was trying to just slap apps on the machine rather than properly integrating them to make it a good experience. You can pick up a wireless keyboard and mouse and perhaps be happy with what is available. It just wasn't a great experience using the included controllers. One feature that you may find interesting is that you can boot another operating system using a USB thumb drive turning it into a Linux or Windows PC. Since the Atari VCS has an AMD Raven Ridge 2 APU and an AMD Ryzen processor with 8GB of RAM, it may make for a decent Windows or Linux PC. If you'd like to see a follow-up video on how to set that up, please let me know in the comments below. Under the system heading, there are a number of options for configuring the display resolution, brightness, and more as well as updating the firmware for the controllers or pairing the wireless connectivity. This all went fine. When it comes to the modern style controller, it's okay. I'm not real fond of the D-pad, but since it works as a Bluetooth controller, it may come in handy not only for the VCS, but also with a PC or Raspberry Pi. I do like the design of the console. The model I picked up was the Walnut variant, which is very reminiscent of my original Atari VCS. However, there is also a black version also. While the classic controller works okay, the stick seems a bit too sensitive for me. But I do like the LEDs as you move the stick around. That's pretty neat. They are currently selling for less than $200, which is a more reasonable price, and why I personally waited years later to pick one up. I think with the recent price drop, it made sense to go ahead and review it, especially considering others may find it helpful knowing how to update to the latest firmware. 
What do you think of the Atari VCS? Have you had one for a while and want to recommend some great games to check out? Let us know in the comments below. That's all I have for this video. If you enjoyed the content and haven't already subscribed to the channel, I hope you'll stick around. With that, I look forward to talking with you again very soon.